five things that separate pro runners from amateur runners. Now, you don't need to be a pro runner to put these things in place. And even if it's just a switch in the mentality to implement some of these things, it may be the difference that you've been looking for that will help you blast to that next level. Number one, they stick to the plan and they trust in the process. They understand, because they've done many of them, that the training plan should bring them, when they've put that together with the coach, should bring them in peak physical condition exactly on the date that they need them to be ready, whether they're running 3,000 meters on the track or whether they're running a marathon. So they trust in the whole view of the training plan. And that's it, 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 as important to get the interval sessions and the long run right as it is the recovery runs, the easy runs, strength training, and the rest of the plan. Whereas your amateur runner is much more running on an ad hoc basis. So maybe they'll hit that midweek interval session and maybe they'll hit the long run because they understand the importance of building speed and endurance, but it's not going to be as powerful or they're not going to be as enthusiastic about the rest of the plan because they don't equate that to running fast on race day. And because of that respect, for the easy runs to make sure that their effort is low enough and it's slow enough on recovery in easy days, that allows them to really push when it really counts. Number two, consistent recovery in nutrition. They have a deep respect. More than any, even cycling or triathletes, which are out there a lot more training, a top level runner might be running for 10 or 12 hours per week. So it's quite comfortable to fit that into a day job. You can do your day job and then run for 10, 12 hours a week and train just as much as a runner. It's the rest of the stuff that's important. And the main thing that I realized when I, I got into this as a full-time gig was that it was the recovery, it was the rest, it was the guarding your sleep with your life that really made you a better runner rather than doing the training. The training didn't change much. What, enabled, what I was enabled to do was to hit those sessions harder so that I was able to consistently hit the interval session, consistently hit the long run, because I was taking care of my body better, because I was guarding my sleep with my life. My stress is completely reduced, as yours would be if you, had, if you didn't have other factors in your life. For example, work, family, children, etc. Much easier when there's less things on the table to really, really focus in on what, for you at that stage in your life, like a professional athlete, really counts. Number three, they have more time available. Cannot overlook that, I cannot do this video without mentioning it, that it's the time available that helps them to do everything well. So whether it's yoga, mobility, saunas, ice baths, but they view that as the cherry on top. They understand the fundamentals, the sleep, the reduced stress, that's the stuff that allows them to train really hard along with the easy recovery runs and easy runs, it allows them to train really hard when it really counts to get that super compensation. It also allows them to be consistent over time so that they will understand that because they have time available, if they've trained too hard on a Sunday, maybe gone too long or gone too hard in a long run, if they're not feeling it ready for the Wednesday, they've not got that time constraint. So they can quite easily put that Wednesday session back to Thursday and readjust the program. What that means to them is there's obviously a lot of pressure off when you don't have to perform every three days and then every four days. And it allows them to push and maybe push the limits and try and steal an extra piece of fitness. But at the same time, they understand deeply what their body is feeling. And it's one of the most important questions you can ask yourself. And for me, one of the most important questions that I can ask my athlete, how are you feeling? And if you ask a hundred different athletes that, you'll get, it's exactly the same the way that they feel, you'll get a hundred different answers. So it's that deep understanding, that relationship, and that sort of able to get the honest truth out of your athlete or out of yourself, how are you actually feeling? Are you ready to do this big session today? Because this is one of the key sessions that's gonna put you in great shape for the, for the competition. Number four, there are levels to discipline. They've got the discipline. They're already all in. They're doing it on a daily basis whether they feel like it or not. But they're very adaptable and they're great goal setters. And what I mean by that is 
they set the bar really high because they know in order to compete with the best athletes in the country or the best athletes in the world, they have to be in peak physical condition in order to get there or thereabouts. And everything in their career depends on the podium or the win or the top 10, whatever it is you're competing for, or to be actually in the final of the event as we've just seen at the Olympics. And that makes them very adaptable. So for example, if you use a simple a uh, case like Eloy Kipchoge, he typically does two marathons a year. And that might be London and Berlin, so nicely spaced. He's not going to be off at any point, although it will scale back for a month a year. But if he's not feeling in peak physical condition going into London, then he can quite easily adapt and reassess the goal. Is it the right condition for me? Do I need to pull out? He's obviously at a stage in his career where he can make those decisions and it doesn't matter what the appearance fee, what the prize money, he's not running for those things anymore. He's very much intrinsically motivated. He's all about consistency. Of course, it might get to the Olympics, it might not have been in peak physical condition for the Olympics, but he's got to go there. He's representing Kenya. It's very important for him. And he's going to try to pull something out of the bag. So although, and this is the discipline, so although they are in the 0.0001% competitive people on the planet the discipline for them is yes they'll do it every day whether they're feeling like it or not but the discipline for them along with their coach is being able to hold back when it really counts so if you had that goal but you're not ready for it it's about sort of stepping back from your ego and saying do you know what I don't think it's going to happen and therefore we're putting ourselves in a bad place or we're digging ourselves into a hole that we might not be able to get out of for a couple of months and that will adjust the rest of your season don't want to be in that place, especially if your career is hanging on it. Number five, they are students of their sport. So when it comes to biomechanics, when it comes to technique, when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to new sessions, they're not adverse to experimentation and working with the top people in the sport that they can get hold of in order to propel them forward. They're always looking for those 1% gains, which compound. If you think about maybe eight different areas, which includes your sleep, reduce stress, running fast, running long, strength, mobility, recovery, nutrition, diet, hydration, etc. If you are really serious with yourself and judge yourself out of 100 in each one of those different areas, ask yourself, could I get 10 better? Probably with diet, for instance, you're probably at about between a 50 and a 70. Could you get to 80? Everybody could get to 80. And therefore, what would that mean for your strength training? What would it then mean once you've improved your diet, once you're eating a lot more healthy, and maybe that's, that comes with reduced weight, and you're gaining more power in the gym and more strength where it really counts, what would that do to your interval times? And then as a knock-on effect, what would that do to your race times? And that's only two or three areas. It's incredibly important to constantly analyze what you're doing, what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, what you need to do more of, what you need to do less of, but that may change over time as well. And we often see that with older athletes at 30, 35, 40. They may need to train in a different way. It's a lot more risk adverse than how they train when they were 25. Really important point, and it's something that you can apply to your running, especially if you're in a full-time job and you realize, okay, reduced stress at this point is gonna put me in a really good place to train towards London Marathon or to train towards Berlin Marathon or Abu Dhabi Marathon, whatever the next challenge is. So reduced stress will probably mean that my sleep will improve. And if I can just improve those two areas and look after my diet, three of those areas working together, the results or the results compound. And so the results are exponential. Incredibly important. Hope you got something from this. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below.